CDL practice test, California, combination vehicles, part 2. Question number 26. You have a major leak in the service line, and you apply the brakes. Service air pressure will escape and cause the A. Tractor spring brakes to lock on. B. Trailer tank pressure to be lost. C. Trailer emergency brakes to come on. The correct answer is here. C. Trailer emergency brakes to come on. Explanation. If air pressure in the emergency airline drops too low, say because of a bad leak in the service line, the trailer emergency brakes will come on. Also, the tractor protection valve will close to keep air from escaping from the tractor. Question number 27. Why should you make sure that the fifth wheel plate is greased as required? A. To reduce heat and noise. B. To ensure good electrical connections. C. To prevent steering problems. The correct answer is here. C. To prevent steering problems. Explanation. There shouldn't be any space between the upper and lower fifth wheel. However, friction could cause steering problems. To reduce friction, make sure that the fifth wheel plate is well lubricated as required. Question number 28. Low slung vehicles can be risky at railroad crossings because A. They are more likely to jackknife on the uneven ground. B. They are more likely to get stuck on raised railroad crossings. C. They may take longer to stop. The correct answer is here. B. They are more likely to get stuck on raised railroad crossings. Explanation. The two types of combination vehicles most likely to get stuck at a raised railroad crossing are low slung units, car carriers, low boys, moving vans, etc., and single axle tractors that are pulling a long trailer with its landing gear set to accommodate a tandem axle tractor. Be very careful when driving such vehicles at railroad crossings. Question number 29. When backing a tractor under a trailer, you should A. Always use the lowest reverse gear B. Always approach the trailer at a slight angle C. Do it quickly to ensure that the kingpin is locked into the fifth wheel. The correct answer is here. A. Always use the lowest reverse gear. Explanation. When coupling, use the lowest reverse gear and back slowly to avoid hitting or damaging the kingpin. Question number 30. What two brake systems should you check when inspecting the brake system in the cab? A. Parking and emergency brakes. B. Spring brakes and parking brakes. C. Spring and service brakes. D. Trailer service and trailer emergency brakes. The correct answer is here. D. Trailer service and trailer emergency brakes. Explanation. The two brakes that need to be checked when you inspect your brake system are the trailer emergency and trailer service brakes. Question number 31. Why should you not use the trailer hand valve while driving? A. Because it won't work as well as the foot brake. B. Because you should use the parking brake. C. Because it is hard to reach. D. Because of the danger of making the trailer skid. The correct answer is here. 
D. Because of the danger of making the trailer skid. Explanation. The trailer hand valve should be used only to test the trailer brakes. Do not use it in driving because of the danger of making the trailer skid. The foot brake sends air to all of the brakes on the vehicle, including the trailer. S. There is much less danger of causing a skid or jackknife when using just the foot brake. Question number 32. You are driving a combination vehicle when the trailer breaks away, pulling apart both airlines. You would expect the trailer brakes to come on and A. The tractor to lose all air pressure. B. The tractor protection valve to close. C. The trailer supply valve to stay open. The correct answer is here. B. The tractor protection valve to close. Explanation. The tractor protection valve keeps air in the tractor if the trailer breaks away or develops a bad leak. If air pressure drops too low in the service line, the tractor protection valve will close. This stops air from escaping from the tractor and lets air out of the trailer emergency line, causing the trailer emergency brakes to come on. Question number 33. What are glad hands? A. Devices that are used to connect the service airline to the relay valves. B. Devices that are used to supply air to the trailer air tanks. C. Devices that are used to fix service and emergency airlines. D. Coupling devices that connect the service line and emergency line from the truck tractor to the trailer S. The correct answer is here. D. Coupling devices that connect the service line and emergency line from the truck tractor to the trailer S. Explanation. Glad hands, also known as hose couplers, are coupling devices that connect the service and emergency airlines to the trailers from the truck tractor. Question number 34. What should you do to prevent the crack the whip effect? A. Stay close to the rear of the car in front of you so you can make sure your driving is smooth too. Avoid hitting the car in front. B. Change lanes quickly to avoid the crack the whip effect. C. Drive fast so that you have no chance of causing a crack the whip effect. D. Steer gently and smoothly when pulling trailers. The correct answer is here. D. Steer gently and smoothly when pulling trailers. Explanation. As the crack the whip effect is unique to combination vehicles, you will have better control of the truck and any attached trailers when you steer gently and smoothly. Sudden turns, lane changes, etc. can cause the crack the whip effect and cause your trailers to turn over. Question number 35. Which statement best illustrates the crack the whip effect? A. When you make a quick lane change or sudden movement of your steering wheel, the tractor tends to rock and sway. The velocity of the rearmost trailer forces the tractor to roll over before the trailer. B. Your trailer is half full, and the cargo is loaded in the front of the trailer. When you make a sudden movement of your steering wheel, Cargo will tend to forcefully slide to the back of the trailer, forcing the trailer to roll over. C. When you make a quick lane change or sudden movement of your steering wheel, the rear trailer tends to swing out. The force of the rear trailer becomes amplified, causing it to roll over. The correct answer is here. C. When you make a quick lane change or sudden movement of your steering wheel, the rear trailer tends to swing out. The force of the rear trailer becomes amplified, causing it to roll over. Explanation. A sudden maneuver by the tractor may cause the rearmost, last, 
trailer to swing violently and possibly roll over. This is known as the crack the whip effect. It is caused by rearward amplification. The farther a trailer is from the tractor, the more likely it is to start swinging dangerously out of control. Question number 36. To test the tractor protection valve, charge the trailer air brake system, turn off the engine, and A. Flash your high beam headlights on and off several times. B. Step on and off the brake pedal several times. C. Keep pressing the brake pedal firmly. The correct answer is here. B. Step on and off the brake pedal several times. Explanation. To test the tractor protection valve, charge the trailer air brake system, turn off the engine, and lower the air pressure by stepping on and off the brake pedal several times. The tractor protection valve control, also called the trailer air supply control, should pop out, or go from the normal to the emergency position. When the air pressure falls into the range specified by the manufacturer, typically 20-45 C. Question number 37. You can confirm that air is going to all brakes in your trailers by A. Opening the emergency line shut off valve at the rear of the last trailer and listening for air escaping. B. Confirming that the air pressure is at normal levels. C. Opening the emergency line shut off valve and then the service line valve at the rear of the last trailer and listening for air escaping each time. The correct answer is here. C. Opening the emergency line shut off valve and then the service line valve at the rear of the last trailer and listening for air escaping each time. Explanation. To check whether air is flowing to all trailers, go to the rear of the last trailer and open the emergency line shut off valve there. If the entire system is charged, you should hear air escaping. Then close that valve and open the service line valve again. You should hear air escaping. Question number 38. After connecting the airlines but before backing under the trailer, you should A. Walk around the rig to make sure it is clear. B. Make sure that the trailer brakes are off. C. Supply air to the trailer system and then pull out the air supply knob. The correct answer is here. C. Supply air to the trailer system and then pull out the air supply knob. Explanation. First, make sure that the trailer brakes are working properly. Before backing under the trailer, set the trailer air supply control to lock the trailer brakes. You do this by pulling out the red air supply knob on your vehicles or moving the tractor protection valve control to the emergency setting. Question number 39. What action should be taken when you park a trailer that doesn't have spring brakes? A. Use air pressure from the trailer air tanks. B. Remove emergency airline. C. Use the emergency brakes. D. Use wheel chocks. The correct answer is here. D. Use wheel chocks. Explanation. When you want to park your trailers and don't have spring brakes, you must use wheel chocks. Question number 40. What are bobtail tractors? A. A tractor semi-trailer that is prone to experiencing a jackknife skid. B. Another name for large combination vehicles. C. Tractors that have semi-trailers. D. Tractors without semi-trailers. The correct answer is here. D. 
Tractors without semi-trailers. Explanation. Bobtail tractors do not have semi-trailers. Question number 41. What are the two trailer airlines that every combination vehicle has? A. Tractor air supply and tractor protection valve. B. Emergency valve and service line. C. Air supply line and emergency line. D. The service line and emergency line. The correct answer is here. D. The service line and emergency line. Explanation. The service line and emergency line run between vehicles. For example, from the truck to trailer or from dolly to second trailer. Question number 42. To uncouple a loaded trailer, after the landing gear has made firm contact with the ground, you should A. Turn the crank a few more times until the trailer is lifted off the fifth wheel. B. Secure the crank handle safely. C. Turn the crank a few more times to lift some weight off the tractor. The correct answer is here. C. Turn the crank a few more times to lift some weight off the tractor. Explanation. After the landing gear has made firm contact with the ground, turn the crank and low gear a few more times to take some weight off the tractor, but not so much that you lift the trailer off the fifth wheel. This will make it easier to unlatch the fifth wheel and couple the trailer the next time. Question number 43. Which shutoff valve should be open and which closed? A. All emergency lines open, all service lines closed. B. All emergency lines closed, all service lines open. C. Emergency and service lines at the back of the last trailer open, valves on the trailer closed. D. Emergency and service lines at the back of the last trailer closed, valves on the trailer open. The correct answer is here. D. Emergency and service lines at the back of the last trailer closed. Valves on the trailer open. Explanation. To test that air reaches all the way to the back of the last trailer, you can open shut off valves at the rear of the last trailer. On both the service and the emergency lines, you should hear the air escaping. Close the valves. If you do not hear the air escaping from both lines, Check to see that the shutoff valves on the previous trailer tractor are in the open position. Question number 44. To stop a trailer skid, you should A. Use the trailer handbrakes. B. Counter steer. C. Release the brakes. The correct answer is here. C. Release the brakes. Explanation. Once you realize your vehicle is in a skid, you should release the brakes so that the wheels can grip the road again. The trailer will start to follow the tractor and straighten out. Question number 45. What do relay valves do? A. Send air to the trailer air supply control. B. Regulate air inside trailer air tanks. C. Connect the service and emergency airlines. D. Connect trailer air tanks to trailer air brakes. The correct answer is here. D. Connect trailer air tanks to trailer air brakes. Explanation. Relay valves connect trailer air tanks to trailer air brakes to send air pressure to the trailer. Brake chambers. Question number 46. At night, 
When a vehicle is carrying a load that extends 4 feet or more beyond the rear of the body, there must be at the extreme end of the load. A. Red flags. B. A red flag. C. Red lights. The correct answer is here. C. Red lights. Explanation. According to federal regulations, if the load projects more than 4 feet behind the rear of the vehicle, the end of the load must be marked as follows. Open bracket. 1. With red flags, each 18 inches square, in the daytime. Or. 2. With two red lights at night, there are additional federal requirements on how to illuminate the rest of the load. As states may impose their own additional requirements on the transportation of oversized loads. 49 CFR 393.11 49 CFR 393.87 Question number 47. What is the best way to prevent a rollover? A. Put all cargo anywhere you see fit, and drive at normal speeds at turns. B. Put all cargo in the center of the trailer. C. Put all cargo on one side of the trailer, and drive at posted speeds at turns. D. Place the cargo as close to the ground as possible and drive slowly at turns. The correct answer is here. D. Place the cargo as close to the ground as possible and drive slowly at turns. Explanation. Keeping the cargo close to the ground and driving slowly is the best way to keep the trailer level and prevent rollover. Putting the cargo in the center of the trailer also helps prevent rollover, but keeping the cargo close to the ground and driving slowly is the better option. Question number 48. You supply air to the trailer tanks by A. Pulling out the trailer air supply control. B. Connecting the service line glad hand. C. Pushing in the trailer air supply control. The correct answer is here. C. Pushing in the trailer air supply control. Explanation. On newer vehicles, the trailer air supply control is an 8-sided red knob on the dashboard of the tractor. The knob may be labeled pull to exhaust, push to supply or something similar. When you push the knob in, it will flow through the trailer's emergency air lines to charge the trailer air brake system. Question number 49. To unlock the fifth wheel, pull the release handle to the position. A. Closed. B. Open. C. Neutral. The correct answer is here. B. Open. Explanation. When uncoupling. Unlock the fifth wheel by raising the release handle lock and pulling the release handle to the open position. When you do this, keep your legs and feet well clear of the tractor's rear wheels in case the vehicle moves. Question number 50. On a double or triple vehicle, which wheels of track the most? A. The rear wheels of the first trailer. B. The rear wheels of the tractor. C. The rear wheels of the last trailer. The correct answer is here. C. The rear wheels of the last trailer. Explanation. Off tracking is defined as the different paths taken by the front and rear wheels in a turn. The longer the vehicle, the greater the difference will be. Thus. The wheels on the front trailer will off track more than the tractor's rear wheels, and the wheels on the rearmost trailer will off track most of all. Question number 51. How do you avoid off tracking? A. Drive at a slow and steady pace with little variation. B. 
Keep the front of your vehicle away from the curb and go toward the left lane. C. Steer and follow the curve of the curb closely when you make turns. D. Steer wide enough at turns to avoid hitting curbs, pedestrians, etc. with your rear trailer. The correct answer is here. D. Steer wide enough at turns to avoid hitting curbs, pedestrians, etc. with your rear trailer. Explanation. Since the rear trailer has the highest risk of off-tracking, you should steer wide when you make turns to avoid hitting pedestrians, curbs, etc. with the rear trailer. Question number 52. If your vehicle gets stuck on a railroad track, you should a. Get away from your vehicle and call 911 or the posted emergency number. B. Radio in for assistance. C. Honk your horn loudly and call 911 or the posted emergency number. The correct answer is here. A. Get away from your vehicle and call 911 or the posted emergency number. Explanation. A train traveling at 60 miles per hour can take more than a mile to come to a complete stop. If your vehicle gets stuck on a railroad track, don't spend any time trying to free your vehicle. Get out of your vehicle and walk quickly at about a 45 degree angle to the tracks in the direction from which you expect trains to approach. That way, if your vehicle is hit, you won't be struck by flying debris. Call 911 or the telephone number on the railroad crossing sign for assistance.